God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, like a thief that comes in the night, we had a visitation this last week after the first rain. Uh, we were upstairs eating and drinking like the people before the Noah flood and watching a couple of movies on television. And when we decided to go to bed at 9 o'clock, Shirley went downstairs to her dressing room and walked into two inches of water all through the downstairs, three inches out of the patio. Uh, the pumps that we had uh, were stuck and were not working, and all of this rain came in that one little short time. Mm. Uh, one little short time. It's like the thief in the night. You don't know when he's going to come. He's going to surprise you. That's Jesus' parable about the second coming. When, when the Lord comes to judge the quick and the dead, as we say in the creed. In the creed. When, we, when we are all called to account for ourselves, the living and the dead, to stand before the judge and our accuser and our uh, prosecutor. Our prosecutor is going to be Jesus. He's going to judge us, the one who loves us the most. So I can't imagine that he's going to do a bad job of defending us. But he's also the judge. So he has to decide about us, what we, what we do, what we have to do, what we have to become, or what is the best thing that we can be. And he helps us to get there, helps us to get there. Now, these, he says, we don't know when it's happening. We don't know when it's going to come. And I say that it already has come. And each day you stand in that judgment, and you have that choice of making between good and evil, between righteous and unrighteous, between hate or love, of loving our neighbor, of loving God in each person. It may not be easy to love our enemy, but love the God, the Christ that's in that person, and, the, and pray that that person will be able to do what is the right thing for them to do, do what is the right thing for them to do to others, the right thing to do to our environment, to our world, to our own souls. The thief, if the thief called you up or said, wouldn't it be nice if the thief said, okay, here's, a, here's a, an email to you that I'm going to come Thursday night at how about 8 o'clock? Or maybe a little, night, a little later, when you're ready for bed, or when everybody else in the house is asleep. That's when I'll come. Lock the door as much as you want. Leave the sign out front to say what kind of security system you have, so I'll know how to, do, how to, be, uh, to turn it out, to turn it off. <coughs> Lock the door as much as you want, I'll come in the bathroom window. You won't know when because I'm not going to tell you when. It's not like that's when I'm going to come and so you'll be ready. If you're ready, you won't let him in. Right? If it's a thief. But what kind of a thief is God's thief here? He's going to sneak in in the middle of the night and he's not going to steal your silverware or your TV or your computer. He's going to come and bring you gifts if you'll let him. He's going to come and bring you peace to bring you love, to bring you compassion, to bring you the things that you need to be more Christ-like. Of course, we don't always get what we want. We get what we need. We always get what we need. This thief, who, if we let in, will change our lives. And that's something that we often don't want. Now, when we have this flood, we want to change our lives quite quickly. Shirley's all for filling up the patio, the sunken patio, and even the downstairs, bring it up above the water table level so we don't have this again. For the 13 years that we've lived in Point Roberts, we've had no floods until last year and again this year. Now, what's interesting about it is we felt pretty badly about that. We felt, oh, what's happening to us? Why me, Lord? 
And then we had taken our car down to uh, Dennis's to be serviced. And um, they said, oh, leave it there at noon. We'll be back shortly. So we left it there. We had lunch at the senior center. We came back. He was, he was still not there. And we went home, and then we heard that a tree had fallen on their house. And last year, a tree fell on their house as well. Now, uh, we think our flood was not very, very much of a, uh, an issue. And then after that, we told our daughter about it on the phone. Our phone had been out for several days. We set up a computer. But then pretty soon the phone came back and the computer doesn't work. So <laughs> we, we talked to our daughter and we told her all about this. And at the end, she says, well, I hate to do this, but I think I'm going to one-up you. The trainer, uh, of her, her, her boyfriend's daughter, is the trainer in the, in the horse uh, riding business and teaching our granddaughter how to do jumps. And she got on a young horse and was just riding around as they do to keep the horse exercised. And the horse was acting up and being a little snotty, so she pulled on the, the, the reins and gave it a little kick, and the horse reared up, fell over backwards on top of her, broke her pelvis in two places, broke her nose, and pushed her back a little bit out of shape. The flood doesn't seem like a big deal. Uh, so we have her in our prayers. She has pins in her one side of her pelvis to hold it together, and the other side is it's a fractured like concrete is what it sounded like. Uh, and she can't pin that, and she can't put weight on that leg, and she has to hobble around uh, a little bit. She's in a wheelchair, and th they got her back straightened out. That's not a problem. Her nose is bandaged up too. So that's the bad news. That's why we have these apocalyptic stories. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to all of us, some worse than others. And yet we live in a beautiful world where God is on our side. None of these things are an act of God. That's an insurance idea to get them out of having to pay. An act of God. No, these are not an act of God. And they're not an act of man or woman either. These things just happen. They're accidents. They're, they're surprises. They come like a thief in the night sometimes. And yet, we're in God's hands. We're alive. We're well. Our friends will survive. Or not. The second coming is like that. What is the second coming? Why is this so dreadful? We're going to be judged? No, don't worry about that. We're going to be in heaven. We're going to have the fulfillment of all that's been promised in these stories. All that's been promised in these Bible from back in, in the Old Testament there up through the time of Christ and, and into the future. He's coming. He's already come. He came at Christmas. He came again at the resurrection at Easter. And will he come again? The biblical, all three of the Gospels seem to think so. And one thinks he's already come. I think we can see it's not a matter of time. It's not a chronological thing. All of this happens in the fullness of time. We're talking about the, the march of time, the one-way ticket that goes from past to present to future. And we're talking about the eternal moment of time, which comes down like the vertical of the cross that is outside of or through our chronological thing. When we say he will come, he's come, he will come again, we're talking about that theological concept, about that breaking in of God's time into our lives. When those moments happen for you, when something happens that sets you alive, even for a moment, to watch a sunset, or to see pretty clouds, or to see someone smile, to someone come up and touch you, those moments that are meaningful to you are moments in the fullness of time. And those are the moments that you remember, or those are the moments that will change you, change you into 
that kind of person that you want to be. God is working his purpose out in every moment. And his purpose is when it breaks into our time, calendar time, chrono, chronometer time, chronological time. I always think of chronometers when I think of that, that Greek word. And, uh, and how important they were when I was first going to see you. How important they were to find out where you were. You had to know the exact time. We had three chronometers and we rated them uh, algebraically to each other to see if one of them was get going out of, out of rate, out of time. This one gained half a second a day. This one lost a quarter of a second a day. That kind of thing. How, when, when does one get out? What time is it when you take the sight to find out where you are? Four seconds will take you a mile off, off of your position. Four seconds. So you have to be right. And I have a little aside on that. When I was teaching Shirley celestial navigation, she had a sextant and the, the watch, and, and she was taking her sights and working them out with an almanac and tables. I had my sextant and I had my watch, and I was working them out with a, a navigational calculator. She was always about 15 miles off in her position. Of course, I kept looking, checking, checking through all of her calculations, looking through her sets, and what do you, you take the fit side, and I look to see whether 15 seconds could be taking the middle of the sun instead of the bottom limb of it. 30 seconds would, of arc would be taking the top. So she, she's looking at the sun, and the sex that looks right. I go through her calculations, they all look right. Why is she 15 miles off? from my calculation. Well, I had programmed in the wrong date. <laughs> and one day difference is that many miles a day difference. So, you know, what are we referencing ourselves to? You know, she was ref I was referencing her position to my calculation. But in our lives, what do we reference to? If we reference to God, to Christ, in everything we do, then we can see how far off we are, how many miles off, how many seconds of arc we are, how we can correct that, how we can do better next time. Well, that's, that's I think, the good news. Christ is coming at Christmas again. We memorialize, memorialize that. We look forward to that. We're anticipation. One of the things the flood has done for us is to get us out of the shopping mood and out of the malls and out of all that, that and into what is really important right now and what can we do to and with each other, to and with you, to and with our family, to those that are hurting, to those that are in pain and suffering, and to those that are in joy. Can we bring some joy to their life, some love, some Christmas cheer, and I don't mean just the drinks, I mean our emotion for them, our emotion to them, and the way we act in relationship to each other.